Some people call me the space cowboy, baby. Some people call me a gangster love. Some people call me Maurice. Because I speak to the pompatus of love, nigga. Actually, my sister's name is Mari, and I'm Jonathan. And sometimes I just like to see if I can send a little bit of warmth and love. And um, You know, there's so much bullshit out there. And, um, and if you just look at the, uh, the opportunities we have today, and you think about how easy it is to communicate with, with all, it, it, you know, th- there's a lot of things that we could say that are negative. But you know, if you look at technology and where technology is, and you know, I, I remember I started a mortgage company, and I had this was about 11 years ago, 12 years ago, that I had the idea. I was in Austin, Texas, that I had the idea that I could sell mortgages on this internet thing, nigga. And, and how I arrived at that, that conclusion was just real simple. I just asked myself the question, what would I, how would I find a mortgage? And, you know, I was going broke fast and, you know, and, you know, I just sort of worked backwards. I said, you know, I guess I'll, I just go on that internet thing. And so I learned search engine optimization. And there I was in Austin, Texas. And uh, I was going to some SEO classes every Wednesday or every Thursday night. I forget. But it was really cool because that was in an environment where, you know, 40, 50 people got together. And we all had different companies, different websites. And we, we all kind of, it was a real interesting, beautiful, rare um, um, gathering of all different ethnicities and all different uh, types of people. And I was a mortgage guy and I wanted to learn how to get my website up there. And I, anyway, I ended up making uh, a, a wonderful living in the mortgage business. And it all came from my ability to, uh, to market my company online. SEO, search engine optimization. Um, and, you know, recently, you know, obviously the mortgage company's gone night night. I don't know how long you've been following this channel. But my name is John. It's not Maurice. And I'm going to speak to the pompatus of love. I got a story. I want to talk to you about something that I'm kind of, um, that's more important than SEO, search engine optimization. You know, recently, um, you know, I heard, I heard the, the counsel of God and, uh, and, and, and I felt him say, or I felt the spirit say to me, well, I gave you all that experience to market your mortgage company let the mortgage company go because I ran that company for 10 years and it's hard to let a, something you grow for 10 years go and and I just felt the Lord say to me you, use what you learn in a new thing and behold I'm doing a new thing and you know anybody knows with seasons things change and things start and Sometimes we can we can hold on to something for so long that you know it's you know there's all there's all this talk about letting go, but letting go is really difficult um, and evolving and, and growing. You know, I talk a lot of on this channel that one of the very first themes that I wanted to really talk about is evolving, and I, I kind of picked that theme, or that theme kind of picked me because I, I I'm evolving. You know, I went through a hashtag MRA situation and then I'm evolving to a new business, a new industry and kind of in what Richard Rohr calls a liminal space and that's such a beautiful word. Google liminal space and look at the images of that. In a liminal space and Richard Rohr, he's a Catholic priest at Albuquerque, you know, he talks about when you've left the old tried and true but you're not yet to where you need to go and you're in this liminal space. If you're visual, think of a, going into the beautiful home and you enter the atrium. You're not quite in the house, but you're not outside either. Liminal space and learning how to, Richard Rohr says, to navigate that. And, and so I've kind of navigated it with all different kinds of things. You know, of course, I've, um, you know, I've done all five stages of grief. And what happened with me is I kind of went through a hashtag MRA civil case where I, I lost... I basically lost my family and my business simultaneously. And most human beings do not know what that's like. They just don't know. They've never 
they've never been through that. I recently was talking to a guy who's pretty familiar with the situation. He goes, man, I think you're, I think you're mentally ill. And I, I said to him like, wow, I mean, can you imagine, you know, how any person would be like, I, I one time went to a, I, I once went to a funeral in Dallas, Texas for a man who lost his wife. Um, and I remember vividly this, you know, I'm 40 years old at this, at this video. And this is probably about five, six, seven years ago. And you know, he's a young man and he just lost his wife and he was surrounded by college friends and surrounded by love. And I watched him walk out and he was, I remember his face and in, in the utter fucking pain and despair and how he was held up, like literally held up by his friends. And he walked out and we greeted him and of course said all the kinds of things that we could have said to him. And, um, you know, imagine if I would have walked up to that him and said, you know, I think you're mentally ill. You're really having a hard time with this. And, you know, of course that, I mean, if I did that, I'd probably get punched in the face and I would probably need to be punched in the face, but very few people understand, uh, you know, what it's like for men to go through civil cases. Like this will be the second Christmas in a row that I have, that I will not experience Christmas with my children. And here's the thing is I have two beautiful, healthy, alive children that are healthy and smart. And because of the way the current civil system is and because my ex-wife went cunt, um, you know, again, man, and then my business and learning how to let go. Remember, I'm speaking to the poppetus of love. I'm a grinner. I'm a midnight toker. So what now? Where do we go? And how can this channel bring you light and love? Because the last thing you care about or even want is you don't want more burden. So what I want this channel to be is for me to speak hopefully light and love to you and wisdom. And maybe, maybe I can make you think or maybe I can make you, make you laugh. I may, maybe I could just tell jokes. Or maybe I'll tell you, uh, maybe I'll be more punny than funny. I mean, I have all kinds of puns like, uh, well, I got this one about German sausage, but it's the worst and and never mind. Anyway, so back to the pompatus of love. That was a little, little, little punny, maybe a little funny. Okay. The thing that I would recommend to any person who's in a liminal space The thing that I would recommend to any person who's going through grief or maybe letting a, one career go and a new one is, a, is going to emerge or perhaps using a relationship analogy, maybe you're moving from maybe singlehood into marriage or maybe the other way, maybe you're going from marriage into divorce or maybe you're, maybe you're evolving or maybe you're, um, Maybe God is, is cause, causing you to move closer to your family for a season. Maybe God is causing you or willing for you to move away from your family for a season. And, and the one thing that I want to make sure that this channel never, never does is I never want to become dogmatic in my views to you. And sometimes when people help, they become dogmatic you know, like for example, I'm in a season right now where God has just has told me so many times it's time to let my family go, and and I thought He meant like at level like one and two, like okay. Um, well, to be real specific, you know, about oh, two or three years ago, on the the day that my grandmother died, God said to me, "Let your family go." And of course, I thought He meant you know let them go. Well, okay. Well, we were already distant. But he's like, no, when you show up to that funeral, you need to love people and let them all go. And then there were things that happened at that funeral that confirmed that message profoundly. Of course, we don't like the idea of letting family go. And then slowly, 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 and then hashtag MRA happened. And then now God's literally like, no, cut, sever, let them go and simply intercede for them. And there's been, a, there's been three people that God has literally said to me, 
pray for these people and intercede for them for they their soul is in the balance and I'm like fuck what is intercede for and you know you can go to you know you can read some of the Psalms where, where David intercedes or excuse me where Moses is interceding for Israel and it's you know we don't use a lot of that ter- those terms so back to evolving and back to uh, how this season how, how this channel can help you let something go and, and I think the one piece of advice that I would that I would offer any person is in the transitions they're both very uh, you know, both, both very exciting both very fearful it's, it's, they're, it's very sad it's very lonely the one thing that I could say about the, the, the liminal space is how important it is to move into what God is doing and agreeing with what God is doing versus negotiating and managing or trying to make something work that God has left. And in my own way, in my own Fibonacci um, perfection and imperfection, I hope you take that message that learning to let go is learning how to let go and moving into what is in a really, really, really deep way and letting that old thing go. And those old things can be beautiful. Those old things could be zip codes, it could be people, it could be marriages, it could be businesses. But pursuing the presence of God is worth it. And nothing is worth, nothing is worth um, living outside the presence of God. And the only way that you really know how terrible living out of the presence of God is, is to experience how wonderful the presence of God truly is, and then everything else becomes utterly secondary and tertiary. And, you know, my grandmother, who's passed away, and God bless her soul and God rest her soul, you know, she said to me once, she said, I hope you're being loved well. Or she said something to the effect of, John, I hope you're loved well. My name's Jonathan, but most of my family calls me John. And she said, John, I hope you're, I hope you're loved well. And little did I realize the impact that those words would have on me. In fact, I really think that was God speaking through her to me to say, I hope you're loved well, and that's a choice you're going to have to make and learning how to let inferior loves go, the lesser loves go, the lesser ways of and, 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 and sometimes when we're not established in the new land or Canaan, as the Bible mentions, we get stuck in liminal spaces or we get stuck in the past. So learning how to let go is not something that we do just once. It's something we're doing all the time. And living the impermanent, impermanence of life and, and the, 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 the Asians, the Orient, they have, they have, a, 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 um, they have a, a philosophy called wabi-sabi, which is embracing the impermeance of life and learning how to live life in a wabi-sabi way. So maybe I'll explore some of that and, and maybe we can learn from an ancient culture. Or maybe I could speak to you about the Enneagram and, again, bring wisdom because, man, when we're navigating these spaces, these liminal places, learning how to um, navigate them with wisdom. You know, the Bible says something very interesting about wisdom. It says, wisdom is only of God. If you think of that, there's one thing that is only of God, and it's wisdom. Wisdom. There's so much I can say with that. So if I can bring wisdom to your liminal spaces and help you let, let things go and to move into something beautiful and better, man, that's what I want to be a part of. Email me. You know the drill. Americana417 at gmail.com. Email me. Tell me your story. Tell me where you're at. Love to see how far these videos go. You know, there was once a point of, once upon a time, long time ago, man, if you wanted to reach 100 people, man, you would have to do so much stuff. You'd have to you know, rent all these seminar places and you'd have to do this stuff and you'd have to have these mail outs and these people. Now, 
because of my experience with SEO, because I realized that, man, if I could, boom, and like, man, now I, now I know what you were doing. The mortgage company was a setup for a better thing, and you were just teaching me, much like you taught David before he fought Goliath. There's an interesting story. If you, read, if you read the story of David, or better yet, hire me. I'd love to come speak to your church or your organization and tell you the story of David and show you how relevant um, that story of David is. Man, if, I mean, if there's any book, if there's any story in the Bible, whether you like the Bible or not, man, read the story of David. Man, it starts where he's, he's abandoned by his family and he has all these brothers and sisters. They don't give a fuck about him and Anyway, he's out fighting, you know, lions and tigers his whole adulthood. His dad doesn't even invite him to the audition to be king. And then one day, if he's facing Goliath, and he says something very interesting. He says, Goliath, you're nothing more than the lions and the tigers that I've already fought in my youth. And that's what I think the, um, the, the wisdom of God is speaking to in the Bible with that story is that man if you look at your life you look at it with God's eyes you can see that every trial and everything was ordered to teach you and to develop you so that when you're fighting Goliath he's nothing it's nothing it's nothing so a lot of times in these channels I really feel like God wants me to be a teacher and I'm not sure if he wants me to be a comic I love comedy and I know you I love documentaries and there's all kinds of things that I love but I'm asking, you know, God, tell me what you want me to do with my life. My life is yours. And I just feel like he's like, keep going, I got you. So this little YouTube channel, thank you for coming along. I would love to hear where you're at. Hope I can bring light and love to you. Tonight from Durango, Colorado. You guys be good. You hear that horn, that train horn? Did you hear it? I hope you did. That drive from Durango to Silverton, if you could take that train, man, that is such a beautiful, just epic, 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 epic land. It's, uh, I mean, again, I just, um, I, I cannot say enough about how the beauty of Colorado and, 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 how, and how lucky and fortunate I am to go through the deepest liminal space of my life in arguably the most beautiful, beautiful place in my life. And, and even recently, I, you know, just a moment ago, I was, I was kind of having my own meditation with God, and, and I felt like He was really saying to me, "Focus on what's full and what's good," because you know, it, the ego always wants to focus on what's missing and what's lacking. And, and God was like, "What's full and what's good?" And I'm like, "Well, just my time in nature and how I've fallen in love with nature, and, and to be able to go through a liminal space in such a beautiful, beautiful part of the country." And, you know, that is, that's such a blessing. I mean, I live where people pay to vacation. And as much as they can come in for a week and two weeks and they think they've experienced Colorado, no, they haven't. It's only when you've lived here for a month or two months and you're, you're hiking and you're ski, learning to ski at 39. And I, you know, I even took a road trip up to uh, California and I, you know, in, in my little uh, private journal, I saw this map of Timberon, California, and that's where Robin Williams lived. And, you know, man, it just, you know, I look at the things that God has brought into my life to minister to me in this season. And it, and it reminds me of that old Church of Christ song that I used to hear. It says, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Man, I've come a long way from the Church of Christ. At least I hope I have. But man... Some of those songs, a cappella, baby, I surrender all, I surrender all. Even the Church of Christ, as much as I think their religion is cultish and dogmatic, I can look back at learning how to sing those a cappella songs and how even on these solo hikes out here in Durango or uh, out there in Telluride, where I just was, I can, I, can see, I can hear those songs of I surrender all. And it is well, it is well. It is well. You guys have a good night. Let me know if you're uh, where you're at. I'd love to I'd love to see uh, this channel grow. Share this content if you like. If you really like it, drop me some PayPal. Uh, my name is Jonathan Fibonacci. Email me at americana417 at gmail.com.